Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Duns. Today we're studying 2 Samuel chapter number 2. Let's go ahead and get started. Now this is a book where it's going to be a little different than what we read last week in the book of Galatians. Galatians was a very short book, but man, it, it, had, it had really deep principles. You could, I mean, you could spend a whole lot of time going through verse that. By verse. verse by verse. Second Samuel is one of those books that, that we tend to enjoy a little more easily because we love a good story. It's the reason why we see movies. It's the reason why we read novels. We love stories. So this is a book that covers David's 40-year reign as king. You'll notice that at the, the, the onset of this particular book, it begins when Saul dies and it's going to end when David dies. The events of this book uh, are sometimes really, really encouraging. And it's almost like walking across a field and being able to just pick up diamonds off the top of it. I mean, some of the takeaways are just right there. Other times, though, you got to dig for them a little bit and you got to remember that where David was a man after God's own heart, David was still just a man, which means it's not going to sugarcoat the fact that David is not the Messiah. He's not Jesus. And you better expect to see sin because he is a person and all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible tells the truth. And the Bible tells <laughs> the truth. All right. So look in verse number one. It says, and it happened after this that David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said, go up. And David said, well, where shall I go up? And he said, to Hebron. So verse number one is just a quick conversation between uh, David and the Lord. It almost feels like it's just kind of an innocuous kind of like beginning statement, but it's really not. Why? This is vastly different than the way Saul led. Jim, what was your takeaway that from that? That is, you know, my takeaway. <laughs> that is my takeaway. Yesterday, remember, I was focusing on Saul because he died and that's just kind of the time you reflect on the life of the person who died. I had my own little funeral moment mm -hmm. and I was sad because Saul had so much potential. He was the first chosen king of God's people and, and he looked the part, you know, you want him to do well, but he did not obey God. He chose not to obey him and that was his downfall. And so what I see here immediately in verse two, when it's, David's turn, um, he wants to do it different and he wants to do it the right way. And so what I, as I read that song and it's scripture, but step by step, you lead me, I will follow you all of my days. Looking to the God, looking to God for his leadership. That's how David wants to live. He wants to live in obedience to God to the point where he's like, okay, I need to do something. God, what should I do? God, should I go? God says, go. God, where do I go? Give me the specifics. Like step by step, he wants to obey God. And so yesterday I said followers of the way um, need to be obedient to God. We have some sirens happening. Followers of the way need to be obedient to God. And that's what we see David doing. Also followers of the, of the way can learn from others' mistakes. They can learn from their victories and from their mistakes. And I think David had a front row seat to the mistakes of Saul, and he wants to do it differently. That's right. Now, here's what will help you in the rest of this chapter is really, like, take this chapter and say it's the tale of two kingdoms. So we've got David, who is going to become the king of just the tribe of Judah, okay? And then you got a guy named Ishbosheth. This is Saul's son, and he's going to become king of everything else. So you got David's family making him king and Ishbosheth's family kind of sealing his position as almost the rest of what his daddy ruled. And you see two very different outcomes. For instance, when you read this, when you read this it begins with David asking God all of these questions. Well, now here's the, here's the logical flow of this. When did David decide it was a good idea, a good practice, and a good habit? to start asking God for leadership. Is it here when he is to be king? No. David was doing this when he was a soldier. He's doing this when shepherd. he was a fugitive. He's doing this when he's a, when he's a shepherd. Mm -hmm. So this is not something David decided when it finally came his time. You don't decide how committed you want to be to the Lord on the big day. You got to decide how committed you want to be to the Lord early. Because once you get to the big moments and you hadn't settled in the little moments, the big moments are going to be too much for you. like Dave Ramsey. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, also notice where this is. He, he's going to Hebron. 
So Hebron, if you remember in, in the Bible, Hebron is where the patriarchs are buried. It's where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are buried. And this is where David is made king. So there's a, there's a good little tie in there. I'm sure we could dig through that later. But I want you to understand this. David eventually wants to be king, or he's told he's going to be king over the whole nation. And where will David eventually build his palace and centralize his government? It's going to be in Jerusalem, okay? David's not in Jerusalem yet. God didn't tell him to go to Jerusalem yet. You know the first place he told him to go? To Hebron. Which means that David's life is not going to be getting to the, getting, getting to the finish line immediately. Mm -hmm. A lot of us want God to just get us to our best day immediately. Point A to point B. Point A to point B as quick as possible. The problem is God has a path for our whole life and the steps along the way are just as important as where we end up. The process now, is the point. The process is the point. That's exactly right. I appreciate all of the help. Thank you very much. Uh, now, let's look to the other kingdom. So there's Saul's general whose name was Abner. Saul's general, Abner, decides he's going to go make Saul's son into king. And by the way, who made David king? Well, you could say that the tribe of Judah said, we want you to be king. But in reality, God, God made David into king. Who made Ishbosheth king? Abner. Abner seems to be really excited about being the power behind the power. And thinking he's in charge. And listen, that only gets worse from here. So the, the tale of two kingdoms is one where power makes right. Or just because you're in charge, you think you're right. David's kingdom was going to be one on God. The kingdom is going to be based on the fact that God is right. By the way, remember this. David is not just called to be a king. He's called to be a shepherd. So Psalm 78, verse 72, read that for us, Jen. He shepherded them with a pure heart and guided them with his skillful hands. All right. So listen, David might have had the role of ending up as king, but he wasn't supposed to be a king like others were king. He was supposed to be a shepherd king, which is interesting because he didn't grow up as a prince. He grew up as a shepherd. So when, when you look at, just remember, how God raises you is often how he's preparing you to do what he's ultimately got you to do. So you, you need to be faithful. The story then ends with David's general and Abner, the general, getting in a fight. And what ends up happening is David's general named Joab has a brother and his brother ends up being killed by Saul's general, uh, listen, I know, here's, here's what you need to understand. The nation of Israel is supposed to be God's people. But you can see that right here, this is not the kind of kingdom God intended for his people. It begins with a blood feud of two generals going against each other. And it's going to be united eventually under a king who is really a shepherd who is really a man after God's own heart. Let me tell you what happens. When you try to build your kingdom in earthly ways, you get earthly things that happen out of it. When God builds a kingdom, God is going to build a kingdom based on the heart that produces fruit. And you have to decide today, is, is the life that I'm going to live today, is it going to be based on earthly ways or is it going to be based on heavenly ways? And only you get to decide that and you got to decide today. So we're going to leave you with that. We'll see you tomorrow in chapter number three. It just, the story gets way more interesting even from here. So enjoy it. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.